So we we're only about uh, four, four and a half miles from downtown Patagonia. As close as we can figure, this mine has been uh, abandoned uh, since the 40s. This is the water that's coming from, from the, the Lead Queen mine. And uh, this is kind of that, this toxic uh, soup that kind of gets made up. Are there a lot of sites like this in Patagonia and Arizona? I have been in these mountains for about 30 years and I'm con I continue to find new ones. As far as we know, uh, there's at least 130 abandoned mines in the Patagonias. I'm Ron Pulliam. Um, I'm a retired biologist. I'm an ecologist. This water right here doesn't normally look like this. It doesn't look like uh, a glass of iced tea. These waters are full of things like cadmium. Um, cadmium uh, in humans has a, a major impact on kidney function, for example. Um, uh, there's a lot of zinc and there's copper in, in this water, high, far, far beyond what acceptable uh, levels are. Uh, this water is not even uh, safe to touch, much less to, to drink. And these are some pretty nasty, uh, nasty things to have in your water. When the sulfur comes into contact with water, it produces basically sulfuric acid. And it's coming out here. Um, some of it's natural. There are places where there's some acid mine drainage that occurs uh, uh, without um, uh, massive disturbance, but this is not. This is, this is um, man-caused. There's sites that I know in the east that um, um, that are this bad, but I, I rarely see anything like this. This is a event that was uh, triggered by very heavy recent rains. And this particular site never was properly uh, remediated. Uh, but even the sites in these mountains, which are more recent and that received a lot of attention in terms of remediation, they're leaking too. We are at the bottom of the remediated area of the trench mine. This site was an Arsarco site that uh, now is owned by the state. It was remediated at great expense. Um, like I say, it looks good at the top, but if you look downstream from here, it is yellow gunk uh, acid mine drainage. Uh, you can see it right starting in this area here and behind me, and you can just follow it right out of the mine site. So here we have what should be an example of really good mine remediation, and it's not good enough. But the truth is, we just don't have teeth in the laws that really uh, require the remediation to be a standard um, that is going to withstand the extremes in weather. And what we've had here is we've had um, a period of rainfall which is exceptional. Um, and uh, we should be engineering for exceptions. The Patagonia Mountains are actually an epicenter in really of North America, in particular in the United States, for the, the incredible diversity among the pollinators. So we have, you know, 600 species of bees. We have an untold number of other uh, types of invertebrate life. Most of the U.S. has somewhere between zero and one or two rare species occurrences per quarter quad. The Patagonia Mountains, the Santa Rita Mountains, and the Huachuca Mountains have often as many as 200 um, rare species per quarter quad. This whole area is full of botanical gems which don't occur anywhere else in, in the U.S. The only jaguar that's known to be resident in the U.S. now is, I'd say, about seven miles from us, but it almost certainly came through this area. We've recently had a number of sightings of ocelots, another uh, Mexican cat which is making its way up into the U.S. We have four species of native cats right in this, 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 this area. And this is the only place in the U.S. where you can say that. But what that crystal is, I don't know. I'm betting, betting it's some kind of salt, but um, I'm not going to taste it.